Better? Okay. So I'm here to, to tell and to explain you a little bit my, my personal story, which is one story among the huge amount of uh, different experience that a researcher could have in, in the world. So I just want to, um, to start with the question that, uh, of, of, the, of this talk, which is what comes after my degree? So this is a, a very important question. And we all may ask ourselves this question, so what's come after my degree, what should I do? And what you have is a lot of, a lot of, a lot of questions and only a few answers about it. Uh, I can explain you more or less what I did, but this is just, uh, this is just my personal uh, situation. What I can tell you is that uh, from time to time, the most difficult thing is to decide what you want to do. And after that, the only thing that you need is uh, Tennessee, so you have to pursue it, your idea, your, your dream, let's say like this. So I did, uh, I, I am a physicist, I did my degree in physics at the University of Barcelona. In fact, we share our studies with Xavier, we are both from the same university, same course, we are sharing the same lectures, let's say like this. And uh, after my, after finalizing my PhD, I made myself three three questions, so should I stay or should I go? Should I stay here, should I do something else? Because I had some doubts about myself. And if I go, where should I go? Should I go to a big group, to a small group, to a big institute, to a small institute? What should be the reasons by which I have to move? And finally, it's how I have to move. So uh, with uh, my own money or with, uh, let's say, government money, or with a project, so should I go to a group, just offered in a PhD, a postdoctoral position? In my case, what I decide to do is uh, to apply for a, for a postdoc, uh, to apply for a fellowship. In my case, it was a Beatriz de Pinos fellowship. I think that it does not exist any longer, so uh, we have the Beatriz de Pinos to come back to Catalonia, but not the one to go outside uh, Catalonia nowadays, but you have a lot of, uh, a lot of possibilities. In fact, when I did my postdoc, it was between 2008 and 2011, uh, Marie Curie fellows, they were not as, let's say, as popular as nowadays. Or the opportunities to have a Marie Curie fellow were quite low. And uh, that's why I, I applied just for a Beatriz de Pinoz and I got it. I went to Germany. Uh, I could go to the States, I could go to Asia, I could go to China. I went to Germany because it was a group uh, there that uh, they were doing uh, scientifically what I wanted to do, which are production of particles. And I was there for three years. And uh, without knowing it, when, when I arrived to, to Hamburg, and I just, because it's hard to go for a postdoc, it's a new country, it's a new life. Uh, and additionally, there are personal constraints that uh, I guess that uh, your couple, if you have couple, if not, your family, uh, your personal situation. So um, they offered me a very nice thing and, and after some time it was, uh, I realized that it was really, really important. So in, uh, in the same group, uh, my, my advisor, Horst Beller, he had uh, an spin-off and uh, he offered me to act as a scientific advisor, a scientific consultant of this, uh, this um, spin-off. And during two years, I was just uh, sharing part of my scientific time with my academia time with, uh, with the industry, or, or let's say the real problems uh, or technology transfer problems. And I learned a lot. At that time, I was quite uh, against this kind of things. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm a scientist. I'm here to, <coughs> to invent, let's say like this, or, or to, to know new, to understand uh, new theories or produce new materials or whatever. But after some time, I, I consider that the time that I spend there at the spin-off, I do it in parallel. So I do it my postdoc and at the same time, I had this experience was really, really important. So I can tell you, what I can tell you is that to share, to do different things at the same time is extremely important for your, for your own benefit not maybe the impact that maybe the impact that it could have at long term is not really important but for your own benefit and to learn and to know different things 
um, after three years being in, in Hamburg, uh, they offered me the possibility to stay there uh, in the com at the company. And I asked myself, <laughs> do I want to, to stay there for three, three years or five years or six years more? Well, the point is that uh, I have to admit that the salary was amazing. <laughs> it's uh, an, uh, in Germany, in Europe in general, in industry, the salaries are really, really high. Uh, the responsibilities are, let's say, I, from my point of view, I'm not a superhero, I have to tell <laughs> that I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not somebody ha that can do a lot of things at the same time, but the responsibilities f at that time, they were low in an industry, that academia, and the pressing the that I had was, was low also, was lower also. So I, I remember that I took some time and I decided, should I stay or should I go now for a second time in my life? And I decided to come back to, to Catalonia, to, to my birthplace. Um, why? First of all, because I wanted to, again, I made a decision, I wanted to, I had a dream and I wanted to pursue this, this dream. And secondly, because I was around 35 and uh, 33, and I decided to, to come back to the place that, uh, that I want to live, let's say like this. And I arrived again to the institute with a Juan de la Cierva contract, a three years contract. Um, and after two years, more or less, one year and a half, I've got a Ramonica Hall fellow. I was really happy about it because at that time to get a Ramonica Hall, well, nowadays I think it's more or less even the same, so at that time to have a Ramonica Hall, it was like, wow, I did it, <laughs> I'm done. It's not like this, so because then uh, you, have to f you have to start to think about money for the project, which is not easy. I mean, it's, it's a scientist, in fact, this is one something that I wanted to point out, scientist is not the guy who is in the lab or who is trying to invent new things. So there is a part which is uh, science, another part which is management, another part which is outreach, another part that is technology transfer and so on and so forth. And you have to somehow mix all together and put all together and do the different things at the same time and coherently, which is uh, extremely important. And um, more or less, uh, this is, uh, this is my, my, my career, my scientific career. Uh, beyond the, the scientific, um, let's say, achievements, there is another thing that I consider that is extremely important, from my side at least, which are the personal constraints. So, uh, to the maternity is important, and to have children, so I have a daughter. So the point to decide to have uh, children, to have babies, and to combine. And I think that it happens in women, and it happens also in, in, in men, in Ramonica Hall, in postdocs, in PIs, everybody. I think that we share more or less the same, let's say, feeling that from time to time is quite difficult, but uh, the benefit that you obtain uh, getting or more or less obtaining this maturity, personal maturity is much more important than what you are let's say, losing uh, in terms of competitivity or in, in terms of uh, papers or in terms of projects. So I don't know, uh, basically this is what I wanted to share with you and I don't know if you have any questions about... Uh yeah, sure. Just I have a question. What do you think uh, if, uh, uh, is recommended to, to work strong in in the personal competencies uh, during the research? So I think that from my point of view, the PhD period is completely different from the postdoc period, which is completely different from the reintegration period. And uh, basically, uh, from my point of view, a PhD period is 100% science. The postdoctoral peri period, there are, I would say, around 25, 30%, which is management in terms of apply for a PhD and, uh, and the uncertainty to obtain a fellow or not. But after, let's say, the, the postdoc period in the reintegration period, it's more management, tech transfer, applying for projects, looking for money than the f science that you are doing in terms of, for sure, labs, but also 
writing papers or, or whatever. And the skills are basically um, the possibility to be able to express your own ideas in terms of uh, tech transfer, in terms of, uh, of projects, to defend your ideas and, and also to have to your personal project and scientific project. And I think that uh, it goes step by step. So from the PhD up to the reintegration or consolidation, or consolidation period. So it's more a comment, uh, and perhaps just to know your opinion. So uh, many of, um, I mean, in our society, let's say, south of Europe, uh, sometimes it's difficult to, to get, uh, I mean, you're born in a region uh, or a place, and it's difficult to, I mean, the mobility, not to go away. As you're a PhD, and uh, we, see, uh, we see here that many of the, of the researchers don't go away, right? Don't, don't get the experience in other, in other labs. So... I personally think that something which defines a, a researcher, mm -hmm. no, it's a, and it's your experience as well. No, the, I mean, this step of uh, uh, going over the barrier and of the uncertainty you mentioned several times, and then, uh, well, uh, have a new challenge in a country abroad. No, so I just wanted to emphasize that, and and also just to know if uh, this, I mean, how this has defined the way you you see the work uh, worldwide now. You know? my personal opinions, but I consider that without my postdoc uh, period, uh, my scientific uh, work nowadays would not be at all the same that I'm, I'm doing. So what I mean is that uh, during your, your PhD, what you are doing is to acquire some skills, technical skills, personal skills, but from my point of view, the critical period and the, the decision and the, the the important decision is the postdoc, because first of all, you decide uh, what you want to do, what you want to work. You decide your scientific project, the long-term project, which is important, and feel free to change completely the topic and to go for something different, because from time to time, the PhD is not directly associated with what you, what you want to do, or basically, you don't, you don't know what you want to do. You just want to do a PhD, and it's okay, it's fair. And uh, I did a PhD, but I could do another one. But personally, the postdoctoral period is the one that you define yourself and, and your, your target, let's say, like this. You were offered this job in, in, uh, in Germany, yeah. it, but you wanted to come back. If you had been offered an, an uh, industry job in Spain, would you have taken it? Your dream was still to do science. Yeah, I wanted to do science, and that was my, let's say, my dream. And uh, as, I, as I try to explain you, so from time to time, it's difficult to take the decision, to say, I want to do this. And once you, want to, once you know what you want to do, then you can get it. So uh, with hard work and a little bit of luck. So you should to be a little bit lucky in this uh, proposal, in this... Uh, and I think that I don't want it to say because I think it's not scientific to say that you need a little bit of luck. <laughs> but uh, you should be lucky at some point. Yeah. And I think I, 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 was, I was lucky. Anything I comment? You have mentioned uh, you have had uh, two big decisions in your life, deciding if you go abroad, if you come back, and so on. Um, did you receive some support from the institutions you were in this moment? What do you think we can do to support your career, or the careers in general? I did not have too much moves from, um, not because of, uh, it's not a f was not a fall of the institution, was life, uh, the things they change, and uh, and the, let's say that the situation nowadays is completely different. The support that the students they have nowadays, it's amazing comparing the support that I had uh, 10 years or 12 years ago. Um, first of all, and the second question, I don't remember. Uh, what we can do to make clear the students the next... Information. Uh, from my point of view, information in terms of... Uh, 
fellowships uh, and encourage the uh, students that uh, from time to time, uh, I think that uh, is, uh, the PhD is an early stage of your career. And for whatever reason, maybe you don't have too much publication, maybe your, your, the project that you are working is not extremely successful, but you deserve a second opportunity. So uh, please consider yourself as a, as a scientist, why not? Maybe despite that your PhD was not extremely successful in terms of publication or in terms uh, of, of projects or whatever, and, uh, and uh, go for it. I mean, uh, you're really young. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> as young as you are, so I think it's this is important. Okay. So thank you. Nels, thank you. <laughs>